This time we're going to be mixing epoxy. This particular epoxy is a 4 to 1. So with epoxy you really need to uh, stir it a little bit more slowly and methodically. Uh, you really don't want to do any air entrapment in here if you can possibly keep from it. Uh, it's hard to get it back out. So basically we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did with the vinyl ester resin but with epoxy to show you that it's just as simple. Uh, works the uh, same way as what you would do with your vinyl esters and it does work very very well with the Negra. That's really the most important part. If you are building some parts uh, and you're in another country and I'm unfamiliar with what resin system you are using uh, and you're not really that familiar with what resin systems that I've used or that we've evaluated for appropriate adhesion with our material, contact Jen Hanna and share with her just a few details on the resin systems that you do use and I can go to various resin manufacturers and get this, the data from them and what would be a good offset so I could do some trials here in the States for you if that need be. What I'm doing right here is I'm trying to put the veil down without uh, putting wrinkles in the veil so that I have a, as smooth of a uh, surface as I possibly can. Because once we pull these parts off of the table and you get to see what they look like, you'll notice that there's no wrinkles and that the, uh, the Anegra will appear to be on the surface of the part because as you can see, this veil is going uh, completely transparent as I'm wetting it out. And what's the veil made of? This is a this is a fiberglass woven veil. And weight is up to you. Uh, if you want to use a, a 1.5 to as high as a four uh, ounce veil, that is fine. Whatever you're comfortable with working with. I'm concerned with using as light as I possibly can so that we can see the richness and the white, pure white color of the Negra or the black Negra through it. So I try to minimize that and still be able to get a, uh, a surface that I can abrade later on for, for coating. And why can't you just use the Negra on the surface? If we use just the Negra against the surface and you do plan to do any type of abrasion or sanding, uh, if you break a fiber of a Negra, it's typically going to fuzz, much like, say, an Aramid or a Kevlar or a Tijon Toron. Um, so in terms of prepping for uh, clear coat, you want to have something that you can abrade very easily uh, without damaging any of the Anegra fiber so that you wind up with the look that you have shot for. Now again, we're going to squeegee this down, making sure that we've got all of the little voids taken out so that the surface of this part should be just as nice as a mirror. So we'll go back down with our second ply of the neighbor. And lightly wet it out. Now you can, if you'd like to, you can do a little tacking to keep it from moving around if you need to do that um, uh, to preserve the fiber alignment if you're going for a specific look. Now Kevin's never done any composite work whatsoever. He's here as an engineer on our extrusion line for our fiber manufacturing. I want to bring Kevin in now and show him, let him do a little bit of work here to show you how simple it really is. Use a light touch. Does it matter which direction I go in? Not right now. Just get it kind of wet all the way across the top. Remember there's resin underneath and we're going to squeegee and that'll pull some of it up. Now why don't, why don't you make these layups bi-directional? 
We can. We can you actually can. do any type of yeah, layups that we, we choose. Go ahead and grab your squeegee. And get a feel for how it how it works. You feel it? Okay, now try to go in one direction as you're cleaning things up. If you go back and forth, you'll actually push air into it. Into it. Now you can come back across that in a different direction, but you can't go back and forth. That looks like a really nice wet surface. But you've got excess resin here, so now go ahead and push that across the top. And let's use that on our last part here. It's like a pro. Hmm. Huh. All right. Now let's do our last ply of glass here. I'll put it down for you. And again, I like to kind of start at one end and just kind of let it fall into place, minimizing any air entrapment. Uh, now, lightly squeegee across the top of that. And you'll see that it's picking up some of the resin that was already down, and it's coming through. Now, typically on a wet layup, uh, you're, you're shooting for, uh, at the very highest, a 50-50 fiber to resin volume fraction. Uh, you can get as low as 40% resin on a wet layup if you pay attention to the details that we're talking about here today. All right, now you can go ahead and apply just enough resin so that we get this wet out, uh, but without a lot of excess. You see like the little white looking spots under there? That's telling you that it's not wet. Okay. Go ahead and squeegee that in a little bit. Now if the, if the white is still there, then you need to turn that squeegee over a little bit. Let me see what direction that. Yeah, turn it this way. Mm -hmm. And hold it a little flatter to it. Okay. And push down so that you're sliding that resin uh -huh. in. You see it push that air bubble over? Right, away. okay. Okay. You can even turn it a little bit on an angle so that it forces all the air to one side. So when you're doing this, don't use the bevel side. That's correct. Ah, okay. So you can see we pushed all that air. Sure. There we go. Now, go ahead and do a nice, uh, nice smooth flood coat brush on top of that. Yeah, looking good. And just a little touch right here. No more resin. Just move that what you have. There you go. And then just kind of look at the surface of that. And if you see any puddling, you want to try to smooth it down. And you can cross hatch that, so you can go the other direction too. So you can go back and forth this way a little bit. On this one here, the epoxy, you can also see that the, that the laminate, uh, the layup was uh, perfect, that we squeegeed the air from the, the product, both the glass, the veil, and the enegra all at the same time, giving us a surface that is 100% void free.